Hey everybody, at long last, this is my third attempt at a GEAT reactor and I think this one works. Uh, what's going on here? It's the same motor I was using before, uh, but I've got some new pipes and uh, the most critical of those is the inner pipe, the fuel intake pipe is a DOM steel tube, uh, 3 quarter inch OD and the wall is 0 0.120 thousandths, so that gives me an inner diameter of uh, 0.51 and then I'm using a 7 16th rod inside of that so the clearance the radial clearance is about uh, 36 thou I think now um, the tank is the same one I was using before except I cut off a good section of it and sold it to a guy that bought my last pile of stuff and uh, anyways I kept half of it and uh, here it is again uh, making its uh, return appearance this thing what I've the problem I always had with it was uh, f uh, the uh, splash arresting, if you like. Uh, the fuel was splashing up, getting sucked into the uh, intake hose, and then it would travel around and go into the reactor and then stop the reaction. Then it just becomes a vaporizer as soon as you've got fuel up in that section of the pipe. So, I took a washer jug and I cut two plastic discs out of it, four inches in diameter, drilled them full of holes, and then drove three screws through them. One is sitting in the bottom with three um, little tiny bolts in it that like legs so it stands on the bottom of the tank. I'm not sure if it's gonna jump up and blow around in there or not. Who knows? Can't see because I don't have clear pipe. The other one you can see the three screws driven through the top. What I've done there is sandwiched uh, between the plastic and the lid a chunk or a, whatever you call it, a handful of that uh, stainless steel wool. So um, it's a decent uh, get air, good airflow going through that thing, but uh, I think that's going to do a good job. I was going to add an extra, I guess you call it a dry bubbler, so the fuel would have uh, come out through the top, then gone down into another jar, and then another line draws out of that jar, and then there's nothing in that jar. That way any drips uh, land in that jar and get stuck there. That would have been a good test to see if this, uh, my splash arresters are working. Anyway, I'm going to do a little test run on this thing, and the goal, once I, I mean, I know it runs because I've had it running a couple times, but again, it splashed up into the hose and then cut off the, uh, the reactor. But even after only a couple minutes, um, I got a change in the magnetic signature on the thing, uh, including the rod was uh, so strange, I've never seen this before, it's like a candy cane stripe. Uh, of slightly darker gray that went all the way up the whole length of the rod. There was a couple of magnetic spots on it. Um, they seemed right. The nose was south and the tail uh, or the blunt end of the rod was uh, north. So the long term uh, for this is going to be uh, this little turkey here. That's my um, little alternator that I got off of my dad. I'm going to attach that with a V-belt and a pulley and then wire that up, uh, I guess, to a battery. I'm not sure if the battery is necessary for it to operate as a generator, or an alternator, rather, but it uh, should be able to generate 12-volt power for what that's worth. And then it's going to sit on this um, cradle here, which I'm going to make with the OSB that you can see in the background. So that's next, but first off, I just want to make sure that this is going to run and I'm not going to get uh, disgusting uh, fuel residue going up into the uh, into the reactor. The fuel that I've got running in there now I mixed in this jug here and I'm not sure if we'll be able to see this clearly enough but I filled it to the bottom with uh, used engine oil and I've got about 24 liters of that sitting here. Then I, uh, I put some um, two cycle gas in there which I happen to have. I don't have any regular gasoline in the house. Um, C'est la vie. The snow blower is thirsty. And then after that this uh, filthy, disgusting water, which I was using to try and clean out the washer jug that you see, um, it was full of oil. Then I wanted to clean it out and use it as a, uh, I forget what, but I tried to clean it out. Filled it with water and, I think, sunlight detergent, and let it sit and sit and sit. It did clean it out, and then I decided, screw it, I'm not going to use it, because when winter came, I now have a surplus of washer jugs, again. So, uh, that's how that goes. Anyway, uh, this mix is, I don't know what you would call that, maybe 40-40-20 or who knows what. But it seems to work and the resulting fuel, once it gets all agitated, is this uh, gross 
milky brown kind of a mess that smells stinky oil fuel kind of thing. Anyway, we're going to start this outside and I want to see this thing run dry. The benefit to uh, what I've done with this bubbler, there's two things I've done with it. One is the splash arresters and then moving the fuel intake right to the center. That just makes it easier to screw the cap on and off. The other thing is this line here that you can see, that's the bubbler intake line, which is now running outside of the bubbler as opposed to down through the center. Um, you can see the level that this thing is filled to, so long as the engine's not running. As soon as it's running, of course, this is going to leap down into the bottom of the bubbler with all the air that's being sucked into this hose. So, it's a little disorganized now. I just shoved a piece of hose on there and I didn't bother trimming it or anything. I'm going to do that once I build the cradle, which will ultimately hold my little makeshift generator. So, take this outside, start it up, and uh, see what happens. Just started the thing up. The uh, bullet tip of the uh, reactor rod is pointed north. And here we go. See how long this runs. I'd like to see uh, an hour. Uh, because there's quite a bit of fuel in there, as you saw. But uh, we'll just see how this works out. It does take quite a bit to start. And it might just be how far the fuel has to travel. Or it might be that it's like uh, minus 10 or minus 15 Celsius here. Which is going to be about... 10 or 15 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's pretty cold. But anyways, once it does slowly get started, it runs pretty good. So let's see how long this thing uh, runs for. I'd like to see it run dry. We'll find out. <laughs> 